going on guys it's your boy ghost back with another video and this is actually going to be a more interesting video and it's going to be a little bit more of a longer video um today i'm just going to show you guys anyone who's watching um i'm going to show you how to host your own server your your own dedicated server on the aisle now you can you can host a dedicated server um i do suggest however um that you have a decent computer if you have the aisle right now and you're running it and it's a bit laggy or rubber band and it's not loading then don't do this because running a home hosted server will requires a lot so if you don't if you have a clean running smooth the aisle game then go for it but if you don't then wait until you have somewhat of a better computer to do this with that being said, let's move on to our first step of getting our server set up, which will be setting up our static IP. Now, may I just add on to this video that I will be editing this video a lot because it will be showing a lot of personal information, such as IPs and um, passwords and whatnot. But um, basically, once you're in your command prompt here, you're going to want to um, type IP config and this is going to bring up all your IP config configuration settings all that stuff now obviously find your Wi-Fi that you have but right here I have you have your um, IPv4 address dot 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 and then a bunch of numbers your subnet mask two five uh, you have your subnet mask it should be almost the same for everyone I'm not exact I'm not 100 percent sure and then you have your default gateway which is also a bunch of numbers so after you have your st static IP, you're gonna wanna go over to your control panel and you wanna go to your network and internet. And then you want to go to, um, um, what's I'm gonna call it? Uh, let's just click network and sharing. Then you wanna go to change adapter settings. Then you want to right click on your Wi-Fi that you're using and click properties. And we're gonna let this load up. There we go. And now right here, where it says Internet Protocol Version 4 TCP IPv4, I'm just gonna click Properties on that. And now I'm obviously gonna have this blurred because I already have it set up for my server, which runs perfectly fine. But basically, use the IP address, the subnet mask, and the default gateway that you ha that you have in your command prompt, and just simply put it here. That's all you have to do. Now, moving down here below the IP, click on use the following DNS server addresses. Now, you can use whatever DNS address you would want to use. Me, personally, I don't really go in depth with DNS servers, so I just use the Google DNS, which is 8888, and then the alternate would be um, 8844. So once you have that all filled out, just click OK, just click close. Your internet may go down for like a quick minute, and, but it's com that's a com that's completely OK. Now, let's say if let's say that you did all that and your Wi-Fi went down. Um, just simply go back into your properties in IPv4 and just click obtain IP address automatically and that will fix it. That's all you have to do. But for me, my Wi-Fi went down for a quick 15 seconds and came back up no problem. After that, we can move on to our port forwarding, which is probably one of the more confusing states. Now, me personally, my provider, I have Verizon or Fios, and um, there's actually two ways you can port forward. Uh, you can port forward your server, and um, obviously, there's the safe way, and then obviously, there's a da more uh, dangerous way. But um, today we're just going to go for the safe way. I did the safe way and it completely worked out okay. So we're going to come over here. And this is obviously where you would sign in if you have Verizon or Files. And uh, I'm obviously going to be blurring a lot here because it's going to show a lot of information here. Um, but we're going to log in using your Verizon password or whatever you have your password set to. 
and once we're in here you want to find your internet tab or your port forwarding tab forwarding virtual servers uh, i think mine personally is in my firewall um if we go to port forwarding yep here we go so right here as you can see i already have my port forward uh, set and I had to do it uh, two, four different times because I'll put a picture up on the screen. My I couldn't quite exactly set it how I wanted to set it, so I had to do I had to do seven 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 to seven 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 eight. I had to do that two different times. I couldn't do it in just one. Um, I couldn't do it in one applied rule, so I had to do it twice. And then obviously you had to do um get the forward the ports to 27015 and uh, 27016 and also make sure that is TCP and UDP. So that's all you gotta do, just find your port forwarding and then go down here, click add or wherever you can add it. Um for me I um what's I'm gonna call it? I so you go to specify IP for me. For me this is different, it could be different for you. But what I did as I is I did specify IP. I went into my um, command prompt and I put in my IPv4 address in there, and then I did application forward custom ports, and then I did both, and then I put in the port here, added it, and I did this four times. Okay. Now, after you guys got that settled out, you can move on to step three, which is setting up steam cmd now i already have steam cmd installed and updated so i'm not going to be up i'm not going to be uh installing it but i will show you guys how to actually install it so i'll leave a link down below and let's bring this over the screen here and um you download the winzip the winraw and you'll get a steam cmd uh application here all you want to do is make a folder in your wherever you're putting your steam and your um, IO server for me I already did it it's in the folder called steam CMD all you're gonna want to do is drag the steam CMD over into your folder your steam CMD folder that you made and now once you and then you just want to uh, up or double click I'll, I'll do it anyways you're just going to want to double click and open on the steam cmd it's just going to update or for you it's going to install but it's going to update for me because i already have it installed and it's going to install all of the appropriate things it needs for steam cmd to run now after you are done with your steam cmd stuff you know installing it and whatnot what the heck it's about time that you already went ahead and made your IO server. So go ahead, go back out into your C drive or somewhere easy to access that you know how to get to fast and quick. Make a folder. For me, it's Isla Sorna. That's my server. Check it out. All right. Um, but go ahead and make your folder. And all you're going to want to do is type in back on Steam, CMD, login anonymous. And that's going to connect to Steam public anonymously. Okay, now after that, we can install the directory. This is where our server files are going to be placed. Before you do that, like I said, create the folder in the place that you want your directory. So once again, somewhere easy to find, somewhere easy accessible. So for me, it's obviously in my D drive. So it would be, it would be um, force underscore underscore install underscore directive C drive or D drive sorry backslash or forward slash the IO server or or just your name so I'm not gonna click enter but basically once you have your directory sorted out you would do force underscore install You do forced underscore install underscore dir space for me it's in my d drive so i did d colon forward slash and then the name of your folder so instead of the io server this for me would be is the sorna okay 
click enter that will install the io into your folder we're gonna come back we're gonna come in. so one, once it's installed your folder should look something like this all right um once that is done you will have um nothing you're not gonna once it's done installing you actually you're not gonna see anything happen in the program but if it says nothing you're good all it's going to do is create a steam app file or folder sorry after that you're going to want to type in app underscore update 412-6680. That's going to, I'm actually going to delete it, but that, that's what you have to do. I'll leave a link to the form that I'm using in the link below, but that's all you have to do. App underscore update 412-680. No spaces. This will install the, all the files necessary to set up your server. This is also how you update the normal slash public branch if you wish to switch over. Um, if you wish to switch over to the development branch, branch, then just type the same thing, but after the numbers, put a space, and then do dash beta space development, um, and that's going to update it to the development branch. But me personally, I'm using legacy IOB3, so I did not do the, de the development. Now, after that is done, you should have everything, you should have pretty much everything in here. Um, in that I have in your folder, except the server start, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Now, we're going to do some more uh, configuration stuff. Um, head on over to your obviously, if you're not already in it, go to your server file, then go into the aisle, and go into saved. Now, let me let me just say this: if you don't have a saved folder then run your run your io server first that will that will make a safe folder but obviously when i first installed the io i didn't have a saved folder so i'm going to show you guys how to do it without the save folder and then i'm obviously going to show you how to do it with the saved so once you're in go back into the io go into config and this is basically all your any files your configuration settings you could you could either add a game.ini file here or you can add a game.ini file in your saved folder prefer i don't I, to me personally i don't really see why it matters because you already have one right here um but this is basically all your game settings you basically your discord respawn time fall damage nesting growth name tags global chat your server name everything goes in the game any now, if we go back and we go to save your saved folder, go ahead and put a uh, text document in here, a uh, message of the day, uh, just name it MOTD. If you don't name it MOTD.txt, um, and then you don't, you know, put whatever, um, there will be no message of the day when you spawn in. Um, and then obviously go in the config, Windows Server, and then here you have your game.ini. Now, if you want to add a server admin, for example, let me just start by saying this because I had a bit of an issue with this. There are no spaces, no quotes, no nothing in the any files. So there will be, it's literally server admins equals no, no space and then your Steam unique ID or your Steam ID 64. So that's how you set up your admins. And then obviously for every new admin, it would have to, it would have to be a new line. Then, like I said, you have your server name, family sharing, global chat, name, tags. Like I said, everything's there. So, obviously, and then in the in-game mode, you can have, you could select whatever dinosaurs you want to disable. So, if I want to um, disable a Rex, I could put in a Rex. If I want to disable a, a Carno, I could disable a Carno. Um, but that's up to you. And, obviously, you can do what you want with your server. Now, um, moving on, we're going to want to create a folder or not folder file, uh, which says server start.bat. So in order to do that, just go down to new text document and just delete everything. Considering you do have file extensions turned on, 
right here go to view and file name extensions considering you have that already turned on just delete control a backspace server underscore start dot bat and then click enter that's all you gotta do for me i'm not gonna do it because i already have it um so i'm just gonna delete this but um go ahead and do that and then once you have it it should look like this just right click that and click edit with notepad plus plus I do at Notepad++ because it personally looks just better. You guys could do it with Notepad, uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, Normal, I don't know, whatever you guys choose to do. And now I'll probably, it's going to be a lot of links in the description for what you need. But that is basically, you're going to copy and paste what I put into here. And so after that, you just, you can change the server name here. So you just do, is the Sorna. And then obviously keep everything the same, or obviously, so right here on this line, um, change obviously your directory here. So for me, I have the D drive, then the is the Sorna folder, and then the IO exe application, which is right here. Um, so just make sure you, that uh, this directory is correct and set to yours. Um, and then obviously it will run this uh, right here where it says multi home equals 68132128194. That is your public IP. You can go to what uh, you could go to um, what's my IP .com and it will tell you your IP. Just put in your public IP and your multi home IP and you'll be good. If you followed this video and you did everything correctly, considering your ports are 7777 and 7778, then leave your port and query port the exact same. Obviously, here you can select the max players and the survival and the game the game mode. I meant I personally have survival on right now. And then right here you have map, which is I have IOV3 on, so legacy. Um, but the current maps in game on the current branch, I believe, is V3, Legacy, obviously, Test Level, and then y'all. Up to you, completely up to you what you want your um, server name or server map to be. Um, after that, you're pretty much done and ready to have your server up and running. Now, keep in mind, when you run your server, that bat file... You need to be logged into Steam, CMD. So every time you want to launch your server, make sure you log into Steam anonymously or make sure you log into Steam CMD anonymously before starting your IO server because it won't work otherwise. So I'm already logged in, so I'm not going to re really worry about it. <clears throat> um, real quick before I do start, once you have players or friends joining your server, even you, for example, you'll get the saved folder. All that holds is the databases for your bands and your um, players. For me, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, I got to find my file real quick. Uh, this is me right here. I'm an adult Rex. Um, I am not a female, but um, I'm going to run down. I'm going to run down these settings really quick just so you guys understand them for your server. Character class, this is the dinosaur your player is playing as. So I'm playing as an adult Rex. That's why it's Rex Adult S. Your DNA, I'm not exactly sure what that does. So it's going to be blank for everyone. So I, I would, I'd say don't touch that. Uh, obviously, you have your location coordinates and then your rotation as well. Your growth, your hunger, thirst, stamina, health. Um, if you change, if you try and change these to like nine, 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 it's just going to change it back to the normal set, uh, dinosaur, um, what do you want? Limit dinosaur limit. So I guess like, let's say you have the Rex, um, hunger limit is a hundred and the Rex thirst limit is a hundred. If you change it to nine, 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 once that Rex enters the game, it's going to go back down to 100. It won't have 9999 hunger or thirst. It's going to have 100. So don't bother changing anything unless you're switching to dino, which I'll get into soon. Obviously, you have your stamina, your health, your bleeding rate, which you can change. If, if you want to change a bleeding rate for someone, you want to do like a 
0.25 bleed every three sex just put in 0.25 here when they log in they'll be bleeding for 0.25 sex oxygen uh it's the, pretty much the same for everyone if you're not drowning uh b gender if it's false you're a male if it's true you're a female Resting is if you're like sitting down, you know, when you press H, you sit down. Broken legs is if you have a broken leg. Um, progression leg uh, points and tier, I don't really mess around with. Same with unlock characters. I'll leave a link for all of the um, dinosaurs that are currently in game um, and faction codes. I'll leave a link for that down below so you could play around with your file and your friends or whatever you want to do. Um, oh yeah, and by the way, almost forgot, almost forgot, when you change a dinosaur, let's say I wanted to put myself to a, um, let me find the carnivore, uh, let, let's say I wanted to change myself to, I'm obviously not going to change myself because I'm a full grown Rex, but let's say I wanted to change myself to an, um, uh, adult Giga, you would type in a Giga adult s and you would click save so i'm gonna go just delete that and then you'd have obviously your giga adult here and then you'd put in this is where you put nine 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 only put four to five nines in hunger thirst and health if you don't put like four or five nines when changing to an adult dinosaur you will spawn in probably near dead Meaning you're probably spawning on fourth bleed screen. So it's best that you change your hunger and thirst and your uh, health uh, when you're changing to an adult dino. That that doesn't just go for you. That goes for everyone. Everyone that you change. If you change everyone's dinosaur, you have to do everything. So change the hunger, thirst, and stamina. Or health. Health, hunger, thirst. Can't fucking talk today. But anyways, if you guys did all of that, you should go ahead and start up your server. I'm going to start up mine. Once you open up, uh, once you double click on the batch file, the batch file is actually going to close and then it's going to reopen. Just let it do its thing. Um, and I'm going to speed this up. And when it's up and running, I will be back. All right, guys, server should be up and running. We're going to go ahead and play. Check it. I'm going to check it out. Gonna let it do its thing because it's gonna be a bit. Alright, if you guys did everything correctly, your server should be online and running. Obviously, here is mine right here. It's the Sorna 0 out of 100 survival. You got your pain, your version. Just to show you guys that I'm an admin on my server and that it's my server. I should be an adult Rex and I should have admin. It's just so you guys don't think it's just I'm not running or something. All right, so there you go. You got your server message of the day. If you followed me, um, if you followed me when I said where to put your message of the day, this is where you would put your message of the, or 
obviously this is your message of the day just click close there you see i'm a full-grown rex adult 1200 vice force 5.8 tons full grown 100 percent and just to show you guys i'm an admin there you go you could do slash help for all the admin commands uh slash announce Uh, then you could do you change the time so let's change the time to two I'm pretty sure it's night time yes sir uh, we do change I'm gonna put the time back to 12 um, then we can do we do the weather so if you just type in weather it'll give you all the conditions so let's do um, weather overcast and that will change the weather into overcast periodically it won't do it like right away because that looks a little bit sus but as you can see it's changing the weather into overcast there's a bunch of other commands i'm not going to do and you mostly need to do it with someone if you if you're going to test it um you could kick someone you could ban someone you unban uh you could grow someone slice someone keep teleport to someone bring someone so there's, there's a lot of things you could do I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really do. If you guys want to see future videos on how to configure your IO server or have it linked between Discord and the, your server, um, anything you guys want to see, honestly, let me know and I will help you out. Um, be sure to join my support Discord if you need help. Uh, and also be sure to join my IO Discord. Um, I will leave those links in the description down below. And um, if you do happen to join my server, my IO server, th on the IO obviously, but also on the Discord, be sure to let me know and I will give you a Patreon dinosaur for free of your choice. Patreon dinosaurs for me, for my server, includes Spinosaurus, Spinos or Spoons, um, Acros, uh, full grown rexes so you don't have to wait six hours to grow one um raptors, pews camera uh a full-grown triceratops um pretty much any dinosaur really um any dinosaur that you can't play as as the default carnivore um or carnivore or herbivore is a patreon dinosaur from my server so that's pretty much it for this video i really hope you guys enjoyed Sorry, it may have took long, but I'm going to try and end it here before it hits 32 minutes. I hope you guys enjoy. Subscribe, like, comment, join the servers. Peace out.